welcome to another session on tisnet gk and if you are a tisnet 2023 aspirant stay with me for the next 10 15 uh, minutes and we will cover another installment of questions based on the type of questions which have been asked in tisnet in the past but here are something that we give to you as students if you are looking for some strategic inputs on your preparation for tisnet or any other mba entrance exams please uh, subscribe to our channel pathfinder for me if you are looking for some content related to quantitative aptitude or logical reasoning i suggest you look at our uh, channel mend your math you can also join our whatsapp groups or telegram channel by scanning this qr in case you wish to inquire about our tisnet courses please feel free to contact any of these numbers on whatsapp or you can simply log on to www.pathfinderforme.com and have a look at our wonderful courses uh, preparing you for tisnet and even for other mba entrance exams so with that let us get started let us go to the first question which among the following is not correct the capital of ananda patliputra the capital of cheras vanchi capital of shishuna kingdom rajgir and capital of chola kingdom uh, amravati so these are all ancient dynasties and nandas obviously ruled magadh so patliputra has to be their capital uh, shishuna kingdom the capital was rajgir in this case the incorrect option is the capital of chola cholas uh, pandyas and cheras together these three formed uh, three powerful dynasties which ruled areas of tamil nadu and kerala in ancient times so chola kingdom and amravati is not the right answer uh, that that is not correct so nandas during 4th and 5th century bc ruled magadh and nandas were followed by maurya all of us are aware of chandragupta maurya and uh, we are also aware of arthashastra which was written by vishnu gupta cheras also known as kerala putras they ruled in 22nd and 3rd century bc and their capital was indeed vachi shishunaga dynasty uh, the, it controlled magadh and they had their capitals in rajgir and later on in vaishali uh, finally chola the capital was tanjore uh, cholas in fact was a dynasty which ruled for a very very long period of time so 300 bce to 1279 bce almost 1500 years they ruled that particular area uh, must have had some kind of an influence next upanishads are books written on options are astrology philosophy medicine and society the correct answer here is philosophy so upanishads basically try to explain the philosophy behind uh, the sanatana dharma or the hindu dharma so they are commonly referred to as vedantas so upanishads also referred to as vedantas where were the hymns of rigved composed now rigved was the oldest ved and geography wise there was a lot of difference uh, between the hymns written in rigved and the other veds suggesting especially with reference to a very big river called saraswati so all rigvedic hymns they would talk of saraswati as a large one of the largest rivers and as time progressed when we move to other vedas saraswati has not been described as an extremely large river in fact uh, so rigvedic hymns they were composed in punjab most of them and basically punjab region rigved has 1028 poems divided into 10 chapters or 10 mandalas next we have when did chinese rule traveler fahien come to india uh, when chinese ruler fahien came to india who was the ruler so fahien he visited india during the rule of chandragupta 2 this was also the golden period of indian history so during the rule of gupta empire so fahien was a chinese buddhist monk who traveled to collect buddhist texts 
and that is why he traveled to India. He came during the reign of Chandragupta II during the 5th century AD and Chandragupta II is also known as Vikramaditya was the third king of the Gupta dynasty who ruled from 475 common era to 515 common era, a very long reign. Next question, who was the god of Shudras in the later Vedic period? Your options are Agni, Prajapati, Pushan and Indra. Now answer cannot be Agni because Agni was used several times in sacrificial uh, uh, you know, rituals. So it can't be Agni for sure. Indra is the god of rains. So that is also not the right answer. Prajapati was later on identified as Brahma. So the correct answer here must be Pushan. So he is the god of Shudras in the later Vedic period and he also is supposed to have protected travelers from robbers and bandits. Next question, who was the last governor general during the revolt of 1857? Uh, your options are Lord Canning, Lord Irwin, Lord Lytton and Lord Willington. The correct answer is Lord Canning. Not only was he the first governor general, uh, sorry, not only was he the governor general during 1857, but he was also the first viceroy of India. So after the revolt of 1857, the company's rule in India ended and it was replaced by the British crown, which was ruled by the Queen of Britain. And therefore, Lord Canning was not only the last governor general, but he was also the first viceroy of India. And Lord Canning is instrumental in creating three universities, Calcutta, Madras and Bombay. These are three very, very old universities. Next question, who was the leader of Lucknow revolt of uh, in, in the revolt of 1857? So this revolt of 1857 is also known as the Sepoy Mutiny. Your options are Begum Hazrat Mahal, Tatya Tope, Mangal Pandey and Rani Lakshmibai. So these two names, Mangal Pandey and Rani Lakshmibai are well known to all of us. Tatya Tope is also well known to all of us. But these were not the leaders of that revolt. The leader was in fact Begum Hazrat Mahal. She was the wife of Nawab of Awadh. So Begum Hazrat Mahal and her advisor Bijris Kadir Ahmadullah. They were leading the revolt of 1857. She was the second wife of Nawab of Awadh, Wajid Ali Shah. And the revolt of 1857 is also popularly known as the first war of Indian independence. Next, who is the author of the book Unto This Last? Uh, this is a very, very old book. In fact, John Ruskin, Ruskin Pond, Herman Callenbach and Louis Fisher are your four options. But the correct answer is John Ruskin. Now, this is a book on the subject of economics written in 1860. Next, after the year 1853, a substantial amount of British capital had been invested in social reforms, the railways, coal mining and tea plantation. So we all know that in 1853, the first railway was introduced in India. So here the correct answer has to be the railways. In fact, from 1853 to 1880, around 14,500 kilometers of railway line was built by the British. So the first railway line you all know was built and was operated for the first time in on 16th of April in 1853 between Bori Bandar near Mumbai and Thane. Around 400 people travelled and here is some uh, interesting tidbit. It was operated by three locomotives which were named Sahib Sultan and Sindh. So railways. So we should be thankful to the British to start the project of railways in India. The title Viceroy was added to the center of Governor General for the first time. In fact, those of you uh, who have gone through the entire session would be aware that Viceroy was instituted by the British government after the revolt of 1857 when the East India Company gave way to the rule by the British Crown. And that is when the first Viceroy Lord Canning was appointed. And when the Queen was proclaiming him to be the Viceroy, she for the first time used the word uh, Viceroy in 1858. That is your correct answer. So with this, we come to an end of our 
current installment of testnet gk stay tuned to our channel because there will be many more things that we will be doing related to testnet and once again if you want some strategic input or gk related input for trace testnet please subscribe to our channel pathfinder for me looking for some math related content please look at our channel mend your maths you can also reach out to us on whatsapp and on uh, telegram by logging into uh, by by scanning this qr and you can reach out to us on these numbers and in, in case any of you want to directly reach out to me you can reach out to me on whatsapp on this number and i'll be very happy to help you